All right, folks. Edgar Allan Poe. Session two here. And I'm going to go through it and see if I can make some sense out of it. Because what I'm what I'm finding in in some of this are some ideas that, in my opinion, may be coming from some of his stories, which is very very interesting. But let's let's take a look here. Session two. I got two of these here. Let me see which one I want to go through first. This is an. This is a really. Let me do. I'll do this one first. Okay. So in this circumstance, I'm seeing a plane landing in a, in a location. Okay. It's a type of destination point going somewhere, but where? The notion is an airplane landing in an area of interest. The people inside are en route to a specific spot. I'll move to the spot, then I wondered. What's there? It's a kind of remote feeling. Small airstrip, off the beaten path type of place. But why go there, I wondered. The individual is eager to arrive. Something is here that he wants to see. But what is it? Like an engraving of something, or a grave. The trip has an archaeological type of feel to it, an in-search-of type of feel, also to meet someone, like a guide. This person knows the area. What's the meaning of this, though, I wonder? To talk about someone, like the trip is to research and learn about someone specific. What does he learn, though, I wonder? The location of someone, like his residence. The person of interest is deceased, but his home is intact. What is he there to find, though, I wonder? Information about something else, even a map, and or coordinates to another location. What's at that location, though, I wonder? It feels like valuables, objects, things of value. Why is he interested in these items, though, I wonder? The notion is like he's looking for a missing piece to a set of other objects. Like he is missing one of a set and is in search of that piece. Like this drawing here. Does he find it, though, I wonder? I get the feeling it is still being looked for. Is it a set of books or volumes, I wonder? What is the item about? There, are, there is a reference to ships and sailing, destinations, locations, and other people. What else, I wonder? A documentation, signatures, Identifying people and places. It puts people at different places at different times. So it's kind of a map. Coordinates or a set or volumes of something. That is very interesting. Because I'm not sure exactly what it references in regards to Edgar Allan Poe, other than someone who would want to go to his home or the, the, his residences that are now landmarks to see if they can find something. But then I found this. I did a search for Edgar Allan Poe and maps or something along those lines. And I found this, the Bale Ciphers. 
Now, this was interesting because what this talks about is a cipher that was made in the 1800s of presumably this guy here was moving a bunch of gold and silver and jewels and all that and he couldn't continue on so he had his workers bury all of that treasure and then he created a cipher with all the information about the buried treasure the location how much was there people involved and all that kind of stuff and this became a kind of a folklore thing here and this is where Edgar Allan Poe enters the story because as it says here Edgar Allan Poe has been suggested as the pamphlet's real author because he had interest in cryptography which really reminds me of what this is here right here because this stuff in here destinations and signatures and people identified are per the story are what are in are supposed to be in those ciphers now how it relates to Edgar Allan Poe is that Edgar Allan Poe had a big interest in cryptography and he had written a book let me see if they go into that right here he or not a book a short story called the gold bug and it's basically according to what I've read the same story the same situation here and because Edgar Allan Poe was had a big interest in crypt cryptography or encrypted codes it's been theorized that the that Edgar Allan Poe may have been the real author of the Beale papers and did it basically as a hoax that's that's one of the theories because they theorize it again because Edgar Allan Poe let me see if they've got it in here he put something into a newspaper maybe this is it Here, let, me, let me read this it was well known he placed n notices of his abilities in the Philadelphia paper Alexander's Weekly a messenger inviting submissions of ciphers that he processed uh, proceeded to solve in 1843 he used a cryptogram to as he used a cryptogram as plot device oh yeah yeah in his short story the gold bug so it's it's the same story same type of story from 1820 he also he was also living in Richmond Virginia at the time of Beale's alleged encounters with Morris in February 1826 Poe enrolled as a student there but he he also um, it is alleged that Edgar Allan Poe he was posting these cipher notices in this newspaper and then and created a, a a dialogue with another individual who was solving the ciphers and they are assuming that that 
might have been Edgar Allan Poe posing as someone else just to build this mystique. And so this is a quite fascinating story. So the cipher is all numbers. Anyway, let, real quick, it, this is it's all numbers. It's all numbers ciphers, and it's still un, un unsolved. It's, it's like this, and so as I'm doing my research into what the heck that stuff means, let me get back to Edgar Allan Poe here. Oop, where'd he go? I'm starting to contemplate the idea that what this was about, this search for something, may be about this. I've never heard of this before. But when I go when I go back through what what was I trying to get here, it matches that. That's pretty interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so I did another session here. Let's see if I can try to decipher this one. That's kind of interesting because Edgar Allan Poe was this big cipher addict, and a lot of stuff in this in these sessions could use a good deciphering, like this. This is what I'm seeing here. It's like a finger or a caterpillar, something wrapped like a cocoon. But what does that even mean? Something digesting or transforming into something else. This kind of sounds like his, his one book or story that he wrote with all that metaphysical ideas that he had. How does that relate to this target, though, I wonder? The target represents a kind of bridge between one thing and another. How, though, I wonder? An enlightenment. What does that even mean, though? To alter or change. Change what, though, I wondered? An identity. What does that mean? To become someone else. This was really an interesting part of the session. Because as I'm learning more about Edgar Allan Poe and his struggles, his personal struggles, and his failures. I, you know, you know, as I'm as I'm reading this, I'm going through this, he changed his name when he joined the military, he changed his name. Let me see if they got that here. Yeah, he changed his name. Edgar A. Perry. He went under an he went into the military under an alias. So that that's interesting to me, because I wonder how how many times he did that. Just like in the other story with the cipher thing, he was become he would become different people. He would become someone else. That's very interesting. But become who I wonder, an alter ego or higher self maybe. What does that even mean? There is a pursuit going on here to change and or transform oneself into something else. I have to wonder if he created these stories to become other people. I have a feeling he, he may have done that based on what I've read. Into what though, I wonder? A different version, a higher potential, a greater intellect. I can definitely see that. Where is it found, though, I wonder? A geometric scape, like a series of reflections, each with its own dimensionality. This is the, or a, pursuit. You can see the reflection as an alternate version of yourself. That reflection can be obtained and experienced, learned from. The individual then takes on a greater sense of dimensionality and perspective. I feel like I'm inside of a meditation here, a mental scape, observing someone who is in pursuit of something. I was in 
was in Edgar's mind here? And this reminds me of, uh, he has a story about something about mirrors. Magic, uh, uh, let me just keep going. Does or did he uh, succeed in his pursuit though, I wonder? He may have gotten lost in it, or he is seen as gotten lost. Depends on which way it is being looked at. What did he find though, I wonder? Oh, here we go. The idea of a magic mirror to walk through, to go from reporter slash observer to active participant, he became the story. Separated from most everyone else, losing the ability to speak, communication altered. Here, you don't know the language. It's like becoming a baby again. You have to learn everything from the beginning. A foreign space, a new challenge. New patterns to follow, like this person crossed over into the next realm. They most likely are no longer alive in this realm. The, the mirror thing. I did look that up. House of Mirror. Was that House of Mirror? I think it was Hall Fall of the House of Usher. Where its reference here is as House of Mirrors. House of Mirrors. Edgar Allan Poe's The How Fall of the House of Usher. House of Mirrors, Fall of the House of Usher. I think that's where I was at in this, and what that, what that may have meant to him. The mirrors and the reflection, and all, really as like shards or alternate reflections. That's really what I was getting into, and and I really feel it was in his mind. So that's for session number two. Got a couple more coming. Hope you find that interesting. I found it fascinating. This was a fascinating remote viewing into a very complex mind. So more to come. I got, I think, three more sessions coming.